This is Rich with Cruz RO, and we're continuing our review of the five different watermaker modules that come with the Cruz RO watermaker. Here in my hand is what we call the module three, our boost pump. So it, it's cut, the manifold is put together for you already, comes in a bag. I'll show you how that installs. This is the actual boost pump. It's a Jabsco boost pump. And it has the standard Jabsco pump O-ring quick connect fittings. So I'll show you how that mounts here in a moment. So it's already pre-assembled for you in that baggie. Your inlet and outlet are just going to plug right in. We mount it inside of a fan and bracket. The reason we do that is that way when you turn on your boost pump, this 12 volt fan or 120 volt if you got a 120 volt boost pump, it's going to blow directly onto this Jabsco boost pump motor. By having that fan here, we lower this motor temperature by 50 degrees. So a cooler motor, longer life motor. It's really as simple as that. So you want to run this boost pump with the motor and fan bracket. Yes, it makes it a little bit bigger. We've tried a lots of different things. This really is an easy way to get a lot longer life out of this boost pump. The boost pump is a Jabsco PowerMax 4. Notice the difference. There's no pressure switch here on the front. You do not want a high pressure pump with a pressure switch because it's going to be going on off, on off, on off. You know, those switches aren't designed for that. So this is a positive displacement diaphragm quad head in here. It's sending out positive displacement water, meaning whatever pumps out's got to go somewhere. So that's why we have the boost pump bypass plumbing both here on the pump then up on the panel itself. So don't try to operate the unit without the bypass in place. It'll work for a little while, but you'll really wear out the pump heads and overheat your pump. But we've really had great luck with these uh, boost pumps units. You know, the failure rate is incredibly low. And, you know, the, uh, a lot of water makers are switching to these just because of the simplicity. It's an off-the-shelf pump. Really makes your life easy. It has with it, coming through the back of the mount, Here's your electrical wires, so you can wire it right in. And something I'll mention here about the boost pump. Let's review the flow again. From the through hole, through the three the gray valves on the activated carbon filter, then into the boost pump. So that distance you really want to keep down. I know I'm going to mention it over and over, but so many of my troubleshooting calls stem from too much suction on the inlet side of the boost pump. The, the boost pump can produce 60 pounds. It's not the pushing that's the problem. Pumps don't like to suck. They can push much easier. So the closer you can get the boost pump and the activated carbon valving assembly next to the through hole, the easier and better your install will be in terms of getting enough flow. So it can. when I mount it, I would like to mount this either, oops, get the camera angle, I would either mount it vertically like this on a bulkhead, where if there's a leak in my pump head, the motor is protected. Of course, it can be mounted, you know, I think the most common way, if not a bulkhead, is right down to the ground. There is a rubberized standard mounting feet that come with it to dampen any vibration. But you just want to get this, it doesn't need to be down below the water line because it's self-priming. It can handle seven feet of head lift. We just really need to watch that inlet suction side of the pump in terms of distance. Uh, engine room, yes. Small enclosed space, yes. You don't have to worry about that in terms of temperature. Same with the other modules. We'll talk about those specifically if there's a temperature limit. So that's the boost pump that comes with the 20, 30, and 40 gallon per hour water maker. For the engine driven, we use a different pump because it demands more flow rate. But if you have any questions, I'm always happy to help on the placement of your boost pump. All right, I wanted to show how this pre plumbed manifold fits on to the boost pump. I often call this the uh, 
Watermaker install spatial acuity test because this uh, manifold's pre-assembled. It comes in a baggie, but when it's shipped, you know it's flattened out and its shape has changed a little bit. So you can see how it plugs right into the inlet and outlet of the boost pump, and then it gives you an easy, ex easily accessible inlet and outlet line for your half-inch plumbing. This valve, oh, let's show this first. This is a check valve to keep air from flowing in a loop and, and causing you a hard time to prime. There's a valve on here and it comes with a tag that says leave open. Well, why would we put a valve there that says leave open? And the reason is in 90, 95% of the installations, this valve stays open it's never closed. The check valve taking the, the uh, outlet back to section, back to the suction side of the boost pump is all you need. On a few installs that have a long suction side run or a long inlet plumbing side run, occasionally you need to close and pinch down this valve a little bit. Basically you can look at this as they crude boost pump pressure adjusting valve with the one on your remote panel being a fine-tuned boost pump pressure adjust valve. So one thing about the boost pump adjusting valves is worth noting this is a setup and install one time and you're done. Once you if you need to adjust this and please don't adjust this first do everything else check for leaks call me if you need to adjust that Let's talk through the install to make sure you're not just taking a shortcut. So once you adjust the boost pump uh, course valve, and it, which gives you some range on your panel, that's it. It's, it's set. You don't need to adjust that again. It's, it, you've matched the flow rates of the boost pump and the high pressure pump to your specific install of head lift and line loss for your install. So you can see how it plums together. You got your inlets and outlets facing the back of the boost pump. You know, I, I've seen this a lot of crazy different ways, so that's why I kind of jokingly call it the spatial acuity test. But this is the boost pump with the fan and bracket, and this is a standard that ships with the Cruzaro water maker. Hi, this is Rich Boren with Cruzaro Water, and today we're going through the different modules of the Cruzaro Water Maker. And this assembly here is basically assembly three in our module naming scheme, and we call this the pre filter assembly. It's a dual filter housing set up with a blue 20 micron and a white 5 micron pre filter pleated element, and they're plumbed in series. So when you look and you talk about mounting this, there is a flow direction and you can't, it's 20 to 5, so we're flowing through this way. Now you can't just change the 20 micron filter and swap it with the 5 because it's not designed to flow this way, it's designed to flow that way. The reason being, you'll see in and out written on the top of the, of the filter canister tops and if you change the direction of that you'll be filtering your particulates out of the seawater from a inside outside of the filter and you'll never see the filter get dirty it'll just plate up in the inside so pay attention to the flow direction and if you need it to flow in the opposite direction that's very easy just remove the eight stainless steel screws for a piece on the top of the mounting brackets and turn them around and then you'll change the flow direction of the pre-filter elements. Now these come with a straight GA Murdoch half inch push to connect fitting installed on the inlet and outlet side. There's no reason you can't remove that, insert some of the 90 degree fittings we provide you in the bag of parts or use a green uh, line with a gentle bend in it. 
the, the, there's a reason we provided the number of 90 degree elbows we did with the low pressure line and a bag of parts. So when people call up and say, Rich, send me 20 half inch 90s, I always have to say, whoa, 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 what are we doing with those 90s? Because, you know, there's a limit on line loss. Every 90 you add is adding line loss to the system. So you're always better off, instead of using a 90 degree sharp elbow, to gently heat the green line with a hair dryer and get it to gently bend with your hand and make a nice 90 that way. But we do provide you some 90s for the sharp, for the sharp corners. Uh, when you mount these, yes, they need to be vertical or you're not going to be able to get the filter element inside to line up and stand up straight when you go to uh, put a new element in. So they need to be mounted vertically in terms of where this goes in the system, the outlet of the boost pump is pushing through these pre-filter elements. From the outlet of the pre-filter elements, it's going to the high pressure pump. So it's part of that inlet low pressure water loop of the system. These are standard 10 inch pleated pre-filter housings. I like to use the clear bowl so that when they look nasty, that means they are nasty. You know, people call me, hey, Rich, the pre-filters look horrible. When do I change them? Well, when they look horrible. <laughs> but also, one of the advantages of the way we have our panel set up is there's a boost pump pressure gauge. That's telling you how much pressure is right at the inlet of your high pressure pump. The high pressure pump doesn't like to suck. So as the pre-filters get dirty or your raw water strainer gets dirty, it's going to be pushing against some resistance, for example, in the pre-filters. So when you can't get a positive pressure on your boost pump pressure gauge, it's time to stop making water and figure out why. Maybe your raw water strainer's plugged up. Maybe there's an air leak on the suction side of the boost pump could be that it's time to simply change your pre-filters. Now what I do and have done for years cruising and living aboard, once a month I take these pre-filters out, I wash them, I slosh them around in a five gallon bucket, no soap, no chlorine, no secretive cleansers, salt water slosh around, a fresh water rinse if you're decadent, and with a water maker you should be. You should have gotten rid of your uh, chain salt water rinse down long ago. So you got fresh water somewhere on deck. Give these a fresh water rinse, hang them on a lifeline, let them dry. That way the UV light will help kill any bacteria living in these. Then you pull a new set or the set that dried a month ago and is now in your locker and then stick them in. That way every 30 days you're rotating in a pair of pre-filters that has sat in the sun and dried and been cleaned. Then every three to four months I put in a new $10 pre-filter set. You know, they're not that expensive. It's not an issue I don't think of cost. It's really an issue of where do you keep two dozen pre-filters aboard your boat if you're going to change them out and throw them away once a month. So the nice thing about the pleated pre-filters, they cost a little bit more than the string wound or the blown pre-filters, but they're washable and they have greater surface area. So yeah, you can save a little bit of money with the string wound units, but they're really not washable. So at the end of the day, you're really not saving much money. So that's pretty much it for the pre-filter. It's a very simple item. Now, some water makers, let's cover this, only have a single pre-filter. Well, it's because the lower output units don't have to process as much raw seawater, which means the volume that they're sucking through and have to remove the plankton and algae and solids isn't as large. So they can get by with a single 5 micron. But whatever you do, don't use a single filter larger than 5 microns, which is the white in our case. You don't want particles larger than 5 microns getting into your RO membrane. They can plug the membrane, cause you grief, and you, you, know, you don't want your membrane to go. But if you, could only, if you could only for some reason run with one filter, use a 5. It'll just clog up a little bit quicker, your pressure drop will build faster, and you'll have to change it. 
So for a high output water maker, it's kind of industry standard to use two dual filter housings in progression. I think that's about it for this. This is a pretty simple unit. You know, it doesn't need to be mounted above the water line. Below is fine. It's just a matter of trying to keep things as close together so that your plumbing line isn't absolutely crazy.